Big Ten men's basketball unofficial media poll through the Columbus Dispatch and the Indianapolis Star was released on Wednesday, one day ahead of Big Ten media days in Chicago on Thursday. Rutgers set to appear. Head coach Steve Peichel will be part of a panel discussion. They're not doing individual podiums this year, so a little bit different. But it'll speak 1040 Eastern time with along with Kevin Willard of, of Maryland and Mick Cronin of UCLA. Talk about a trio. Uh, that'll be live on uh, BTN. And then the players representing Rutgers, Dylan Harper, Ace Bailey, and Jeremiah Williams. So check all that out. There's plenty on social media. I might do a reaction pod to the whole day. We'll see. A uh, lot going on here in the Rutgers world this week here at the Scarlet Faithful Podcast. But wanted to focus today on Wednesday with the Big Ten media poll, uh, 33 beat writers polled that gave uh, the predictions or projections for 1 through 18 in the newly enlarged Big Ten with the four Pac-12 teams joining. And then also they did a uh, player, first team, second team. And in addition, earlier this week, the Big Ten had a, a official media poll that was their all preseason Big Ten teams uh, which I was fortunate enough to vote it. So wanted to cover that as well. So let's first talk about where Rutgers was picked. Uh, seventh now projected by the Big Ten media. It's very interesting. And I think the overall theme of this, and you've seen the beat guys, uh, the great Jerry Carino, Brian Fonseca, they've written about it already, just in terms of the big publications have Rutgers all over the place this season uh, in terms of preseason projections. Uh, covered the Blue Ribbon, pretty respectable, long-time publication. Picked Rutgers 15th, not just in the country, 15th in the Big Ten. TJ Hitchens, who we had on the uh, podcast not too long ago, producer for Mark Titus' show, and they were talking about it last week, about how you know he was talking about Rutgers 15th in the country, and then all of a sudden Blue Ribbon has him 15th in the conference. So that is one extreme. And then you have, uh, in terms of the Athletic came out this week, picked Rutgers 11th. My beef for them, you can pick them wherever you want, but they cited eight freshmen as a reason. Now, you look at the roster, there technically are eight freshmen, but three of which are walk-ons. So when you're talking about preseason projections, you're, you're not including walk-ons into your roster projection. So that's a little bit of shoddy work. I've talked about in the past, the national media getting to know Rutgers now, and you're going to see these types of mistakes. And they made another one uh, in terms of that. Athletic made a previous mistake a couple months ago, I remember, in terms of the roster. And they still had Oscar Palmquist on there. But uh, they picked him 11th. Lindy's has him 9th. And now the Big Ten media has them 7th, which I think of all the picks is fair um, in terms of who the, uh, you know, the one through six ahead of them. They have Purdue, number one, Indiana, number two, UCLA, number three. Illinois, number four, Michigan State, number five, Oregon, number six, Rutgers, seventh, Ohio State, eighth, and then ninth is Michigan, Maryland, 10th. So the bottom line is the Big Ten is wide open this year. And I do think Purdue, Indiana, UCLA has got a lot of talent coming back. Illinois, I do think that's pretty much, in my opinion, a pretty solid number uh, top four. And I think it's hard to argue with those four teams in your top four. I personally think Rutgers should be better than Michigan State and Oregon, uh, you know, Ohio State, Maryland, Michigan. They've been projected higher than Rutgers in certain certain ranking, preseason rankings. So it's wide open. But I personally, I love this. I love that. I mean, if you look at those four major publications, Rutgers average rank is, is between 10th and 11th. And I've, I've talked about this a lot this offseason. I mean, the M.O., for this program under Steve Peichel, the whole mantra, it's all been about proving the doubters wrong, backs against the wall. You know, how many, remember that year that Peichel kept talking about how they, they were picked 12th and they were picked eighth. I mean, he's used it with veteran teams before. And now you have a younger team, right? And I get it. You see a lot of freshmen and you get nervous in this day and age where COVID is still, COVID eligibility is still a factor. There's going to be 23-year-olds, some 24-year-olds playing college basketball. And Rutgers has a ton of roster turnover, although that is pretty common in the world of college basketball these days. But it's the supporting cast. It's the front court questions. That's where people get nervous about this team. And 
perhaps underestimating the ceiling for Dylan Harper and Ace Bailey. In terms of where this matches up with Bart Torvik, it's actually pretty close. Bart Torvik has Rutgers right now in terms of his Big Ten teams, his preseason, this is analytics-based, his preseason projections. We've talked about this some. Purdue is uh, at 17, Michigan State's at 18, Rutgers is at 19. So he's got Rutgers the third highest of Big Ten teams. Illinois is right behind him at 21. UCLA is right behind them at 24. You have Indiana at 30, Michigan at 32, Ohio State at 33. Oregon is the one that's kind of an outlier. Uh, They are all the way back at 46. You got Iowa right there, Maryland, Wisconsin. So Bartorvik sees uh, the Big Ten even more of a mismatch in the middle. Uh, But overall, I think... The expectations for Rutgers on a national level are kind of all over the place and no higher than seventh. I mean, if you're Steve Peichel and you know, you have the, you know, top three recruiting class who are the top three recruits in the recruiting class coming in, you have Jeremiah Williams coming back. They obviously feel good about their transfer class. This is like, you know, th- this is, this is giving Steve Peichel a gift wrapped message for him to mail to his team and to harp into his team day after day after day that the media does not believe in you. People don't believe in you. I mean, with, and and I asked Dylan Harper about this at media day last week about, you know, his family name and having high expectations because of that for so many years and him having to deal with that challenge and now coming to Rutgers for a program that has been uh, doubted for so long, how his mentality kind of fits with the mentality of this program. And he said, He felt it definitely does, and he feels like he's going to bring that edge to this program that that has traditionally had an edge. And I've talked about accountability before. Obviously, Harper's ties to the program with his family. Uh, But then you have Ace Bailey, right? Now, so in terms of the player projections, skip around a little bit. Uh, In terms of this media publication uh, or poll through Columbus Dispatch, Indiana Star, Annapolis Star, their first two teams, they have Dylan as – uh, first team All Big Ten selection. They have Ace Bailey as the second team All Big Ten selection. Ace Bailey got two Player of the Year votes. Harper, funnily enough, did not get any, but he was voted Freshman of the Year with 19 some votes. Ace was number two at 12 and a half votes. But in the media poll through the Big Ten, you pick 10 players, right, for all preseason Big Ten honors. No first team, second team, just one. And that was the one I was fortunate enough to vote on. I, of course, voted for Harper and Bailey. Braden Smith, who was voted Player of the Year, both by the Big Ten and this uh, media poll through Columbus Dispatch. Uh, Ace Baldwin Jr. from Penn State. Dawson Garcia, Minnesota. Great Osborne of Washington. Uh, Jackson Shellstad of uh, Oregon. And Peyton Sanford for Iowa. So those made all preseason for the Big Ten officially and for this preseason poll. For the Big Ten poll, where I was off was Bruce Thornton and Brooks Bronheiser making it for the Big Ten. I did not vote for them. I voted for Malik Renew of Indiana. And I voted for the freshman from Illinois, uh, Jakunis, the European, who I think is going to be a star. I voted for the two of them. Thornton and Bernheiser made it. And then on the Columbus Dispatch first team, second team, they included Thornton and Omar Ballo to transfer with Indiana, which I did not include for what it's worth. Now, Renault got the most votes of anyone that did not make this first or second team with the Columbus Dispatch Bowl. So he was right there. And the Jacunas was pretty close. He was like four or five guys down. Uh, so at any rate, Ace Bailey not getting voted all preseason honors by the conference media. Uh, that is another chip deposited on said shoulder. And if you're looking for a guy that's already being speculated, I mean, uh, Jonathan Gavoni was at Rutgers practice last week. He is ESPN's kind of draft expert. And he's been raving about Harper and Bailey. He's been talking to scouts that have seen him. He saw them in person. He's got stuff out on social media. I retweeted. Uh, but he's saying, you know, that that a, a poll among scouts, if there's one player that will overtake Cooper Flagg as the number one pick in next year's NBA draft, it's Ace Bailey. So I know fans are worried 
Rutgers fans specifically about one and done players. What does that mean? But I mean, in this day and age, everyone's a one and done player. Pikel's even said so just with the transfer portal nowadays. And I think there wasn't a concern, right? In terms of Rutgers is going to get their best in terms of Ace Bailey, Dylan Harper doing everything they can to have as most successful seasons they can. Obviously it benefits them personally with their draft stock, but, Dylan Harper, in particular, wants to leave a legacy at Rutgers, even if it's just one year. And now you have Ace Bailey, who was slighted by the Big Ten. And now you have the team as a whole that feels slighted. And there's some media day quotes from the team in terms of they're not paying attention to the noise. It doesn't matter. This team, I've talked about how good I think the vibes are with this team, seeing them practice now twice over the last two months, being around them a little bit just with media day and and just uh, how well uh, so many players handled it and spoke about expectations, spoke about the team chemistry. And I just feel like the vibes around this team are really good. And just what you see on the court, how they're picking each up off the floor, uh, you know, the way they're able to coach each other, uh, how competitive things are. This team is going to be your prototypical Rutgers team in the, in the sense of they are going to have a chip on their shoulder. They're going to want to prove the doubters wrong. I mean, if you're Dylan Harper and Ace Bailey, you don't go to Rutgers if you don't have immense belief in yourself, not only as individual talents, but to impact your team in a positive way and to want to be kind of trailblazers. And and that's even the term that Dylan Harper talks about with his whole family and wanting to make a difference at a program that is not a traditional blue blood, not a traditional, you know, national power. And Rutgers is as big of a national story as any team in the preseason because of that. And then you have some gritty veterans, grizzled veterans, Zach Martini, P.J. Hayes, who's looked outstanding, can't be higher on him, Jeremiah Williams, you know, Dirk Hack is tough as nails. You have Acuff, who's going to be hungry, wanting to prove things uh, after being a top 10 scorer nationally, you're going to have a different role. He's had a broken foot. He's back soon. You have Joe Michael Davis, who's over overlooked, you know, a lot, although John Rossi included him and his underrated players nationally. But that's a guy, you know, who plays with a chip on his shoulder. This team is full of them. Lathan Somerville has an edge to him. I just love the, the, the mentality of this team. And I think they're going to play with a huge chip on their shoulder as a team to prove people wrong and to make a real run at this thing. And the Big Ten is wide open. It's wide open. And, you know, the preseason polls I just mentioned, you know, Bart Torvik, the way they have it. I mean, you could see that. And... It's going to be really fun to see this team. Obviously, a challenging schedule. I went through the schedule recently when it came out. Full pod on that if you haven't seen it or listened to it. But this team is set up in a way. I mean, if you told me they were picked by seventh in the Big Ten poll and worse than every other major publication, I would say, yes, please. Can we sign up for that? Like, absolutely. That's that's perfectly plays into the psyche of this program of how Steve Peichel likes to have his team thinking, you know, they were not used to being front runners. And the one year they were picked fifth in the big 10 and they had everybody back with Ron and Gio and, and Caleb, but they struggled to meet expectations. They came back and they made the tournament ultimately, but it took a lot to just get there. This team is not going to have that problem as, as, as many eyeballs will be on them as, much attention they will have. There aren't the same expectations. You know, if they were project, projected kind of a consensus top four team, th- there would be a different vibe for this team. There would be legitimate pressure. Now, as fans, we feel pressure, right? Because we feel like this is the year that they have to hit. They have to take advantage of this year. And uh, there's truth to that for sure. But as players, right, they're in the moment. They're not, I really don't think they feel fan base pressure. I think they put pressure on themselves because they're a team full of really hard competitors, talented players that want to win. And I've talked about this before, you know, Michael talking about chemistry and, you know, the season hasn't started yet. They haven't been punched in the mouth yet. And that's where chemistry really shows up. Right. And, and, and the roles on this team and how Michael manages the rotation and different lineups and, All of that's going to be a major factor, how they gel on the court, how they get along on the court, off the court, once things really get going here. But all early signs are really positive. 
And I think this team is going to be on a mission. And I think there's some real value to that. And I think this poll just reinforces that. So believe me, Rutgers does a great job of letting them know uh, of, of how they're looked at if it's a motivational tool. And they will hear plenty about it. And I just think the mentality of the players on this team, it's going to be a recipe for success to fuel their desire to not only win, not that they didn't have it before, but to have a little bit extra chip on their shoulder, a little bit extra edge to really have the season that they really believe they can have. And that means deep runs in March. Top four finish in the Big Ten, I think, is is certainly possible. And it's not going to be easy. But this league's wide open. You know, when Braden Smith consensus player of the year, I think that's fair. But if you put Braden Smith versus the field, he's not favored against the rest of the field, like a Zach Eady was last year. And, you know, I was on Sleepers podcast, uh, Greg Waddell. They did top 50 ranked Big Ten players coming into this season. Uh, I did all the Rutgers players with him. Jeremiah Williams is number 41. East Bailey was number three. Dylan Harper's number two. And that's what Sleepers, you know, in terms of uh, Carter Elliott, Greg Waddell, and then Joe Jackson, who I've been on his pod, Feed the Post, previewing Rutgers. That's where they listed those guys. And, you know, we talked about Braden Smith versus Dylan Harper, and you could easily see it's not a crazy scenario to think that Dylan Harper can can be the player of the year at the end of the year. And I think Ace Bailey, right, he's, he's the better pro prospect. Dylan Harper's more college ready. And if it was just Ace Bailey here, I think there'd be more reasons to be worried or nervous that he would, whether he would fulfill his potential or not. With Dylan Harper with him, I really think that it's going to allow them to both fulfill their potential. I think Dylan Harper's ability to set Ace up to kind of guide him in terms of shot selection, decision making. I think they were made to play with each other. And I think Rutgers fans are going to have a lot of fun watching this team. Pick seventh by the Big Ten. Again, Big Ten Media Day Thursday on BTN. Pikel's Pike will be on at 10.40 a.m. Eastern Time. Ace Bailey, Dylan Harper, and Jeremiah Williams are their representative program. I know they'll be on a round table or a uh, they'll be on the uh, in the studio for BTN at some point. There'll be lots of coverage. Check social media. I'll have something out. You know, I'll try to put something out uh, at some point. Got some football preview coming up as well. But a lot to be excited here. Second week of practice in the preseason. Rutgers uh, had the open scrimmage last Saturday. A lot of fans were excited to see that. They have the scrimmage at the rack against St. John's on October 17th. They'll have another secret scrimmage at some point, And then they tip off that first week of November at home against Wagner. It's getting real. We're about a month out now. It's unbelievable. And so excited to go through this season with you, Rutgers fans. We've been waiting for this and it's approaching and This is good news. Give them the juice they need to overcome the doubters. Rutgers not picked anywhere close to a favorite in the Big Ten, just the way that I personally like it, that I know the program likes it, and hopefully you like it too. It's not, you know, and again, it's not a disrespect thing per se. Maybe, well, 15th is, 11th arguably, but there are some reasons to be wide open about this team, and and it's not going to be easy, and it could go wrong, but I have confidence that this team is not only going to make March, but going to make a run in March, going to be a real player in the Big Ten, a wide open year. Can't wait to get going here. Thanks so much for listening and watching once again here at the Scarlet Faithful Podcast. 